they should have watched our show. <laughs> they should have watched our show. Maybe you should watch our show. <laughs> I'm Gene Sisko, film critic of the Chicago Tribune. And I'm Roger Ebert, film critic of the Chicago Sun-Times. For the critical difference, it's Sisko and Ebert and the movies. Ever notice how you always hear shh just before the movie starts? Shh. It's not refreshment without Schweppes. Something like this, pretty astounding. If I 
So wait a sec, Ian. So is this um is this the opening to Country Roads that you know? Yeah. All right, here. So let's see if let's see if uh, we can. <laughs> wait, wait. P play that again. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the snare drum starts to roll like this. Right, right. Now, these drumsticks and the snare drum we could use for the show, not live in person, but like when we do like the concert, you yeah. know, for the for the uh, for the video. So that would be cool. Yeah. This piano we can't take in, but we can nah. use a keyboard. We can use a keyboard. It's just because it has that good saloon tune to it. Yeah. Actually, put tacks on the hammers to make it sound like that. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, that does sound good. Now you've got, um, you also have, wait, wait, you know the uh, banjo riff on that, I believe, right? Yeah. Here, let me see. One second. Which you've done before. I think you did that for 4.0. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I couldn't do that. Short. I couldn't. I do can't that. either. No, I couldn't. That's incredible. <laughs> the, do, what's, do, can you do the other banjo riff? Yeah. Y'all having a good time? Of course they're having a good time. ZC, this is a wonderland place. No, no, Tony. This is a wonderland here. <laughs> Fun times. A lot of fun times. Now, what exactly is that uh, instrument? That's a guitar, right? Or is it slide guitar? Resume. Slide guitar. Okay. Now you know um, you can play part of your cheating heart on that. I yeah, believe the, the beginning, beginning tune. So I'm so lonely I could die. You yeah. could play that. Okay. Yeah, Folks, Miss Henrietta Hatpin. That's awesome. <laughs> we'll put that together and then we can have the instruments out. But it's gonna be a lot of puppet work to make this to right. make this happen because I wanna have them try to do songs that they've never done before. Including a lot of Hootie and the Blowfish songs. Which I will be because I'm gonna tell you right now, this I'm gonna say this up front. Ever since I was three years old, in 1996, my mom would play Cracked review from Hootie and the Blowfish constantly in her Buick. And I have a lot of memories, that entire album, and 90s Wonderland, especially The Man and Dog. It was Hootie and the Blowfish, Cracked Review, Tracy Chapman's New Beginning, and Alanis Morissette, Jagged Little Pill. Those three albums, every one of those songs just brings back 90s Wonderland to me. So I thought, let's do, because I could totally see The Man and Dog singing some of these songs ever since I was a little kid in the 90s. Yeah, but it's just going to be a lot of puppet work to get their hands to move to the songs and a lot of close-ups and also we would have to get in at night god bless you, bless what, are you, you. what are you thinking alex thumbs up disco <laughs> diva style <laughs> now uh we still have about three months before um this comes out so how this is all gonna look and how we're gonna do it i have no idea do you have a strap for that guitar yeah because I was thinking, like, maybe we could put it around over Bubba. Yeah, I could get one. Because yeah. we can position his hands and have his hands. Because I'm thinking, like, for the close-ups, when you have, like, a guitar solo or a banjo solo, because some of the songs I'm going to have banjo, so Hank's going to go nuts on it. We're going to have the show playing for... I'm talking about the new songs. We're going to have the show playing, but also behind, we have to push certain buttons to make sure that it all synchronizes well. That's why I'm saying it's going to... Like, I'm not doing every single song, you know... It, you know, we can only do like a couple of them. What's today? March what? March twelfth. Well, yeah. March twelfth. All right. right. So, so we open in a month. We've got three months before the summertime. Should be plenty of time. Oh, dude, that looks great. <laughs> Here's the sponsor. I know you're going to do that. <laughs> this video is highly sponsored by the Philly Petrol Factory. 
Deja vu right now, man. <laughs> I feel like we just did this like four months ago. <laughs> I think I've alone become a meme. <laughs> I saw that picture of my head with all their on their bodies. I've seen that. <laughs> let's take a picture of that one, man. So I got so long. Yeah, let's see that. We can use that. <laughs> yeah, we'll when they're, when they're, yeah, when they're about to start saying, I'm going to get along without you now. Yeah. You still got to put the uh, lip in there, right? Right. If you ever come to the pier and you see me, don't ever talk to me. Don't feel that way. If you just love watching the videos, or if you love the man and dog, or who your favorite character is, I don't care. Seriously, don't do that, okay? Don't talk to me. <laughs> I don't specifically have any man and dog memories as a kid, but I do have some Wonderland memories. Um, this was, I believe, back in the early 2000s. So this was around 2003. I remember going on the Speedway. I remember going on the Cannon Falls Log Flume. I remember going on the monorail. I had no idea later until I looked at the pictures that I rode on a mini telecombat. I also remember going on the train that downtown Gillian's had um, that was located on Asbury Avenue during the Christmas season. I too grew up going to Wonderland Pier every summer since I was born. Um, my first ride I've ever been on was the carousel. Uh, I remember when they had the city jet coaster before they removed it. I remember below the monorail, they had the cat and mouse mini scooters with the shooting gallery out front where the pizza shop is now, and a Pepsi bear in front of a log flume, and many more rides that were completely different. No, the top looks fine. Yeah, the top is fine, but uh, the after I... has got to be a little bigger. Right? I mean, well, I, can't, I can't even. Oh, you're gonna sew it there. in. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I cut, I, I cut it a little too much, right, right in that spot. So I'm gonna have to do the bottom again after I put the um, the gray fur on the eye oh, okay. Doesn't smooth out. Dries real fast. In the '80s, my brother and I went into our own business. Then I started working at a uh, handicap facility. Uh, Jersey Cape Diagnostic, and I was a supervisor there, and Roy was the chairman of the board, and he came up to me and he said, if you ever need a job, come up and see me. So I eventually got another job lined up at a, uh, a book company, you know, printing books and stuff like that, and then when I got that lined up, I came and saw Roy before I started the other place, and, I, you know, he said, well, I hate to take you from the uh, diagnostic and I said, well, I'm leaving anyhow, so if you want me to work here, I'll work here. And that was back in 1989. During the planning session, Roy, Roy was the boss then. And uh, I said, well, if we can do any kind of theme, you know, just let me know. And he said, well, let's do fairy tales, because it's Wonderland. I drew them up, showed them, you know, and then he approved them. Yeah, that's that. polyurethane foam um, and that's what I used to carve. I carve it and then I fiberglass over the top of it. And there was a big snowman I made at one time. You know, there's a lot of stuff that I made that isn't here, and there's a lot of stuff I did that's, that was, has been redone.
some of the fur used to refurbish. This was a lion's fur, I believe. And uh, of course we have the Dalmatian. This here was used for the, the panda, the white and the black. It was a train in the sense of five or six cars all tied together. And it ran just around the inside of the building. It did not go outside at the time. It did two loops around the inside of the building, was, was a full ride. I guess where the exit station is now of the monorail, that's where the six cars lined up and they were all tied together. When, when the lead train went out, the others, they all went together. The monorail track that went outside, there were a couple of guys that got together. They had some welders and they installed the electric to the track, brought the cars out. That was around 1985 or 86, somewhere around there. That door originally came down to the ground. Now they had the door um, just come halfway down. So they had to build a steel beam across that doorway to support the monorail track, which now went through the door. So therefore, the door only came down to where that steel beam was. And then the lower half of the door was then installed below that. you know from drawing it so many and so many times I could just draw Wonderland the front of Wonderland or any anything to do with Wonderland from memory because I had drawn it so many times and I had it basically engraved in my memory all the stuff that I had seen since I was a kid up by the monorail and the frontier by the Frontier Express there was um, a guy that had a sign that said you have to be this tall to ride the Frontier Express. That um, that had been there since I was maybe fourth. Uh, no, probably it's been there, you know, my entire childhood. I'm so happy. Life is lovely. Life is lovely. C E C T V. Dated in August 1984, what we're looking at here. Yep. No, this is not, it's, they're not these animatronics. No, they're not. It's not the same ones. It's not no, the same no. ones, obviously. But I know that Helen Hetty, yeah. How's everybody doing? <laughs> I just found a quarter on the ground, just down by the ramp. Let's, let's see if it works. Let's see if it works, right? Hey, where's the quarter slot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's long gone. <laughs> this one particular day, we went up there to see them. And when we get up there, we look around and I knew them, you know, I knew what clothes they wore and the hats they wore and everything and how they, how they were sitting, how they were positioned. I, I knew the whole thing. And I noticed that the lion on the end, his conductor's hat was missing. And so my dad and I, we started looking around for his hat. You know, we, we didn't hop over the fence or anything, but we were looking around the boxes that they sit on. Like, where's his hat? Where is it? And we found it, and my dad was going to put it back on, you know, the lion's head. But he's holding the hat, and he happened to have his camera on him, and he said, hey, Andrew, put this hat on, you know, I'm, I'll take a picture, and then we'll put it back up. I'm like, okay. And he gave me the hat. Now, now I actually, as a five-year-old, I was holding his hat. And I've seen this hat many, many times at this point. And to hold it in my hand, I'm like, wow, this is, this is the hat. You know, this is the, this is the hat that, you know, this is really cool holding this. And now to a five-year-old, this hat, this thing was huge. I mean, it looks small from up there, but holding it, I mean, it was huge. So I put it on my head. He's going to take the photo. Put it on my head. My head started pinching like crazy, and I immediately took it off, looked inside. There were pins in the hat. Sharp pins. Rusted sharp pins. And, you know, to a five-year-old, that would cause, you know, oneself to, you know, scream and cry, because it would hurt. And it did hurt a little bit, because I only had it on for a brief time. But instead, I'm looking at the hat, and I'm looking back at the lion, 
and I'm looking back the hat, I'm looking back up, I'm looking, I'm doing like a 12 take here, and I realize, so that's how his hat stays on his head. You know, I wonder if these guys have pins in their <laughs> in their heads too. You know, um, you know, and and the same thing. You know, for Rocky the Panda Bear and Henrietta and the Man and you know, I always wondered like like do they have pins to hold up their bandanas and their hats and the band like how did so that was my first behind the scenes look of how they how they you know functioned. And I remember just uh, coming over and. And just seeing that, and just my eyes filled with amazement. I couldn't, I just, it was astounding. I remember being in the fifth grade, in the fifth, sixth grade, and I always sat in the back of the class. I remember drawing in the back, and I, and I can remember drawing them very vividly, uh, because I, I, you know, watched it so many times that I knew what they looked like, and what the eyes looked like, and the colors of the hands, and how the hands were positioned, and what's, what, what the writing was on the boxes that they sat on. And, um, and I remember telling my mom, I said, Mom, when we go up there, you know, take some pictures of them so I can, like, study the pictures so I can draw them, you know, vividly and stuff. Uh, so I can get, so I can get that down. And, uh, and of course, the shipping and receiving sign above it, uh, which I did find out that, uh, was created by Wayne Seddon. And I remember speaking to him for the first time, and I said, Wayne, do you have any idea how many times I've drawn that sign? <laughs> and he said, no, how many? And I said, too many. Too many to count. I remember um, Roy uh, sending myself and a few guys up to a family fun center in some area of New Jersey uh, to meet this man named Al Belmont uh, to pick up um, these bears, as they were called. Uh, so we went up in a truck and we found the family fun center and uh, the guy said, here you go, they're yours. So we packed them in the truck and brought them back down to Ocean City and then Wayne uh, found a spot for them and, and started, uh, started to put them together. Uh, what, what year that was, I'm really not sure, it was definitely in the 90s because I was here. Um, but, uh, that's where they've been since. Nice. Look at this. That's good. What used to be, like, where they are right now? What used to be, like, in that area? Is that where you used to get on and you went through the tunnel? I, I think back then it was, it was all tunnel. It was all just the, the, the fake tunnel-looking uh, material. And I think when we put those in, we had to, we had to cut that tunnel area out to make them fit there. But it went all the way around? The tunnel went all the way around, yes. So the window wasn't even there? Uh, the window might have been there, but uh, maybe covered up. There are many things that I enjoy when working on these guys. Mostly um, bringing back um, a 90s look on each character bit by bit, just by sewing it on them. And like I said before, I was never expecting this to happen, but I make a lot of cartoon figures to scale just by sewing them. And I realized that the 90s clothing and cosmetics that Andrew wanted to bring back on was not completed. Well, I'm just fixing up his right, no, his left, no, his right side of the eye right here. It's just got a hole in it. Yeah, I'm just making this match with this yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm going to put triangles here. Yeah, that's it. Cool. He looks like his old self. Yeah. 1999, everybody. Nice. This is a yo. Whoever videotaped this and put it on YouTube, thank you. Thank God you exist, whoever posted this, because I never thought I would ever see this again. Mc McDermott shrieked when he first saw this, okay? Dan shrieked when he saw this. He's like, dude, you got to see what I have. And it's from 1999, from our childhood years. Okay, it's stopped. Now, if you want to ride that, if you want to, the spare parts are right in that box. You can build it yourself. <laughs>
they didn't paint this, did they? No. We've been painting a lot, so I don't know what's painted and what isn't. We're in. Woo! Doesn't that look pretty? That looks nice, man. I like it. Quest to ride on the log swoon. Oh, 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 oh. Not that kind of request, Hank. Song request. What the hell on the radio? Right, Bubba. We've done received so many requests that we decided to oblige with this. The mask is still too close to the eyes. <laughs> Looks like the picture, doesn't it? Hey, I'm gonna back up. It does. All right, well, that's the first test run of the year. Many more to come. So John Kavchok, he was a manager here. He did maintenance, he did personnel. He was a manager here for a long time. He helped install the man and dog back in 1992. And he did, he was a, I consider this guy a friend, I, I really do. And I've known him for a little over 10 years. He recently left Wonderland Pier a couple of years ago, and he gave me some of the VHS tapes of uh, the pier that we have. Uh, he gave me some CDs, audio tapes, and one of them I have right here. And this is him doing a commercial for Wonderland. It's 60 seconds long. This actually aired on the radio, and this was on March 9th of 2000, and it's 60 seconds. So let's play this and see what is on here. We're going to play this for you now. Let me rewind it. I think that's it. Okay, here we go. Hey, this is John Kafchok, Personnel Director at Gillian's Wonderland Pier. I'm here with Heath Chatouille, Personnel Director at Gillian's Island Water Park. The summer is coming fast, and I have one question for you. Do you want to have a summer that you will remember forever? If so, then on Saturday, March 18th, from 10 to 5, Gillian's is holding a spectacular job fest with opportunities and everything from rod operators and lifeguards to food and game concessionaires. As you already know, Gillian's is the coolest place to visit in the summer, so imagine how fun it could be to work there. If this sounds cool, then here's what you do. On Saturday, March 18th, you and your friends come to the Gillian's Job Fest from 10 to 5 at the Masonic Lodge at 10th and Wesley in Ocean City and choose a job that's right for you. This is your chance to meet your fellow team members and secure your job for what could be your most exciting summer ever. Great pay, great fun is all waiting for you at Gillian's Wonderland Pier and Gillian's Island Water Park. For more information about the Job Fest, call me at... See you on March 18th. Now you know why that sign says Water Wonderland, 0.2 miles. Because it's, you know, we're on 6th Street, 7th Street, Plymouth Place, 0.2 miles. Now you get the joke. <laughs> it's literally the approximate miles from right where we're standing compared to this way. Yeah, I mean, like, it, it's, it's, uh, I mean, it was called, see, that sign has been up there, I think, since 1988 when the water park first went in because... It was originally called Water Wonderland. I have pictures of it, of the sign, when it used to say Water Wonderland. They didn't change it to get... I think Gillian's Island was that small area where the kids part was. Because they had like a kids section for like the little kids. That part, I, I think, was that. called Gillian's Island. I don't think the whole water park was called Gillian's Island. Maybe it was. But I know it was called Water Wonderland because we got that in there. Because they owned both properties at the time. The Wonder Bear was uh, made um, just like the, the rocks on the log flume. That was a deal with we had with Pepsi. We wanted to bring some attention to the park, so it was uh, let's build this big concrete bear and have it on the Pepsi cup.
and, and blown concrete. It's just concrete that was just out of a big hose blown onto it and then shaped. In 1997, the Flyers, and we decided to paint the hat black and put a Flyers logo on his hat. Well, they lost, but that was our jinx. We jinxed them that year. that kids go on today that their parents went on when they were kids um, that's what I like about Wonderland Pier for me we're like meant to be that kind of retro amusement park that's what I, that's what it seems like it was especially the case for New Year's Eve 2021 I went up there to check out the man and dog I chatted with the fans and you know we were having a really fun time what was actually really interesting about that night was that there was a moment where the animatronic stopped working Yeah, it looks, yeah, he's done, he's done, she's done, he's done. Yes. Come on, guys, wake up. I was looking at the fans and I just said, forget, it, let's just dance. Take me home, let's go. Andrew saw the whole thing and he was like, they're not working. I'll never forget the times when I was anticipated and anxious to go to Wonderland Pier again and again. It was my favorite place in the world as a little kid and I should never forget that. And I work here now, which makes it even better. Celebrating 30 years of a man and dog um, really is a testament as to how important they are to Gillian's Wonderland Pier. But when you guys bought them, did they sing those songs or did you like... Because I know you guys must have programmed them to say all that Wonderland stuff. Yeah, they... Those animatronics are originally from a Chuck E. Cheese. Um, back in the day when Chuck E. Cheese was huge with their franchises everywhere, that was in a Chuck E. Cheese. Al Belmont bought them from a Chuck E. Cheese that was closing put them into his family fun center, and when he was done with them, we took them. So I'm, um, I'm pretty sure that we used um, this guy named Eric to reprogram them and to do the songs differently so they more theme it to Wonderland Pier. my 
my love a cherry that had no stone. I gave my love a chicken that had no bone. I told my love a story that had no end. I gave my love a baby with no He got really, he got really uh, clever with this. This is all the original stuff it said on the boxes. He was able to figure it all out from the uh, the pictures. He even made a postage stamp right here. That's really cool. GWP 30, Gillian's Wonderland Pier 30. So here's what he gave us. These are for Henrietta. We might put these on. I think we might, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. This is uh, these are for Tony. These are for his eyelids or his eyebrows. My mistake. Now we've got straw for Hank's hat over here. He made this just so it would be easier to sew on for you, Ian. At least that's what he told me. This is for Henrietta, so we can take the ring off and put this on. And this is another ring for Henrietta. She had another ring. She was wearing two rings. He was able to pick that up from the footage. Ian sewed the tongue on. The fabric onto the tongue. 
Look at the fabric in here. You see that yellow stuff in there? That's glue. This was glued on it. <laughs> what? <laughs> glued? We're really? Tr we're trying to take the mask off because you see this? We're gonna put an end to this once and for all, everybody. Once and for all. Here's the problem. Okay, see this wooden frame in here? See that? See the eye? See the eye right here? When it goes back and forth? Now when it gets too close to the mask, see how it's very close? When the eye scratches, it scratches on this, on that wood, on the side. That's what's causing that. You notice it's always the white that gets scratched. It's never the pupil or the green or even the brown. It's the white. So that gets scuffed up on the wood in here and that's what's gotta be fixed. I'm gonna try to take the mask off, look inside to get a good view of it, try to smoothen the wood out, maybe leave a gap, the gap a little bigger, so that way when the eyes move back and forth, we won't have that issue. So I'm gonna try one more time to get underneath here with this flathead. Six and a half hours later. That's one screw holding up Rocky's mouth. I'll put that in his box where I know where it, where it is. And here, let me try to get the other one. A few moments later. Man, bubble looks so different in the 4.0 4 footage compared to now. I know, right? Yep. There we go. Oh, Sorry for the nightmares, kids. <laughs> and oh. it's off. Oh my, what? <laughs> Halloween mask, anybody? <laughs> um, all right, so the banjo's off. This is coming with me. I need to refurbish that. Definitely that's coming home with me. Um, I knew this had some writing on it. Look, see that writing in there? See that? Yep. Okay, that was see-through. You could see that right here. You could. And I knew you could, because in the pictures you can see it. And I remember whenever I drew them, I would do like a little squiggly line right here on the banjo. Look, that was see-through. You could see that through the other side. But then he painted over it, so you can't see it anymore. going in. That yes. is going in this movie. Oh yeah. Hello. I'm Steve Kelly. I work for the Gilliams up here on the boardwalk. And what an awesome job it is. I understand you're here to check out our newest addition to the park. Cannon Falls. A log plume adventure. <laughs> Construction started in the fall of 1991, with the completion date targeted for Memorial Day 1992. One of the most exciting parts in constructing this ride was the decision to design extensive rock formations on the lower parts of the flume. This created the feeling of riding through a canyon, hence the name Canyon Falls. 
The first three months of construction consisted mostly of building the lower troughs, the rock formation, waterfalls, and the foundation for the towers. After a brief encounter with our local code enforcers, things progressed very smoothly. Shortly after the construction got underway, shipments started arriving from O.D. Hopkins. At times, we found it increasingly difficult to find open space to work, but these guys managed. Working around the giant wheel was extremely tricky, and a lot of the construction of the elevated troughs had to be done in the air. Most of this work would normally and more easily have been done on the ground. Finally, everything came together as Memorial Day was approaching. Here we are, Cannon Falls. Our log plume adventure, manufactured by O.D. Hopkins in Canna Cook, New Hampshire. Isn't it great? You could do um, Let Her Cry by Hooting the Blowfish. She sits alone by her lamp oh. Trying to find another to escape the night. You see what I mean? So it's like there's so many, there's so many songs you could do that are just three simple chords. <laughs> Is there another Who You Need a Blowfish song you could do? With a little love and some tenderness Walk upon the water, we'll rise above the mess With a little peace and some harmony Take the world together I saw you standing there Your head was down, your eyes were red No coma touched your head I said get up Let me see you smile Can we have a walk here in the hallway? Walk the road a while Cause I got a hand for you I got a hand for you And they'll run when you behold my hand. Won't you hold my hand? Hold my hand. I'll take you to a place where you hold can be. Then you wanna be because I wanna love you the best and the best that I can. I was wasted It was a waste of time Till I thought about your problems I thought about your crap Then I stayed up Then I screamed aloud Don't wanna be part of your problems Don't wanna be part of your crap oh, I got a hand for you I got a hand for you Let me run with you before Hold my hand Won't you hold my hand Hold my hand I'll take you to the promised land Maybe we can change the world But I want to love you the best And the best that I can Yeah, yeah, yeah
go Andrew. Thanks dude. Paul, it's Andrew. We're on our way back. Oh, great. You guys have the parts? Yep, three boxes. How far are you guys? We are... Yo, yell at me slow down. I, I know. I, I put my foot on the brake, but it... it... Andrew, are you all right? I don't know. Andrew, slow the car down. I can't! Dan's car is speeding and I'm not doing anything! Hang on! My boys got this! <laughs> Can't you fix it? I don't 
don't know how to fix this! Boy, that sounds really bad coming from a maintenance man. No time for jokes, Paul! The car's out of control! Amy, slow down! You're gonna hit the people! Oh my god. Not the bridge. Not the bridge. Not the bridge! It's okay, it's okay. At least we'll be doing the speed limit now. You know what? We're switching seats. You want to switch? Okay, we're switching then. Come on, take the wheel. Take the wheel, Donovan. Quit moving around. Okay. It worked. Get out now. Now. Quick, find the box. Epilogue. Something happened to my license plates? When I went, for, went in for my interview, I was just astonished by the fact that I got hired on the spot. Um, because I could just remember all my questions and I just remember saying to myself, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find out all this information. I'm gonna get to work the Frontier Express. I'm going to get to push those buttons and... It, it turned out way better than I thought it would. And from that point on, most of the cosmetic work was placed on them by my sewing technique. Juice to 30 years of a man dog, and many more after that.
Yippee-yay! Welcome to Wonderland. <laughs> Beer, that is. Sure hope everyone's having a great time. This is gonna be a request show. Hot dog! I'll request a ride on the log flume. <laughs> Not that kind of request, Hank. Song requests. Like they have on the radio? Right, Bubba. We've done received so many requests that we decided to oblige with this special show. We are sure heap of nice guys. <laughs> oh, you are. Sure. And our firstest number is to Big Mama from Tadpole. Here we go. Wish that I was on a rocky top down in the Tennessee hills. Ain't no smoggy smoke on rocky top, ain't no telephone bill. Once I had a girl on rocky top, half bear, the other half cat. Wild as a mink, but sweet as soda pop, I still dream about that. Rocky Top, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Good old Rocky Top, Rocky Top, Tennessee. Rocky Top, Tennessee. I've had years of cramped up city life, trapped like a dog in a pen. All I know is it's a pity life can't be simple again. Rocky Top, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Good old Rocky Top, Rocky Top, Tennessee. Rocky Top, Tennessee. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Pop my Joe. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Pop my Joe. Sat down to eat with Cotton Eye Joe. Chicken in the bread pan, scratching out dough. Eighteen feet of ice and snow. The roof caved in on Cotton Eye Joe. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. I'd have been married a long time ago if I hadn't been for Cotton Eye Joe. The ball peen hammer and a two by four. Gonna be the devil out of Cotton Eye Joe. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. I fell down and stubbed my toe, all because of Cotton Eye Joe. Oh my guitar, here I go. I'm gonna dance a Cotton Eye Joe. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? And folks, here's a song about another place that's a different kind of wonderland. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River. Life is old there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, growing like a breeze. Country roads, take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia. Blue water, dark and dusty, painted on the sky, misty taste of moonshine, teardrops in my eyes, country roads, take me home to the place. Yesterday, yesterday. 
Have a great day! Go ride the log flume. It's the best! And say howdy to Wonder Bear if you see him. And don't miss going up on that giant wheel. What a view! Ciao! We'll be a seeing you. I just wanted to show you um, this picture of Rocky I made, and I have one other thing to tell you. The reason why I made this animatronic, actually, I was watching your documentary where you were restoring them, like, yeah. And so uh, I figured I wanted to make one kind of like the dog guy, and so um, I did. And yeah, that's really all I wanted to tell you. Bye. Here we go! Good old Rocky Top, Rocky Top, Tennessee, Rocky Top, Tennessee. Come back real soon!